Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Fly Fish University TV. My name is Jordan Ulrich and I'm super excited about these next two episodes. I've actually decided to divide them into two parts. We're talking fly lines for still waters. So episode one, this episode we're going to talk all about floating lines. Next episode we're going to talk all about sinking lines. I understand it would be a bit of a mouthful to compress these all into one episode so that's why I decided to split it right down the middle. Before we get started, I would love, absolutely love, to offer you a free copy of my book, Seven Steps to Fly Fishing Success. If you haven't grabbed a copy already, you can go to flyfishuniversity.com forward slash book. I just discussed some of the fundamentals of fly fishing, some common mistakes that we make as anglers and exactly what to do about them. I'd be most honored to give that to you for free. I'll leave a link down below and I really hope that you love these next two episodes. Okay, so today we're talking fly lines for still waters, part one. Part one is gonna be about floating lines. Now, I've shared this so many times. When I was young, younger, I was still in high school, actually my grad year, I was obsessed with lake fishing. And I would start driving to school, but more often than not, unfortunately, uh, for my teachers and my grades, this is not good advice, by the way. I would, take a, I would take a detour and I'd end up at our local lake and I was trying to figure out how to catch trout, you know, on the fly in lakes. And it was pretty confusing for me at the start, but I still have that, that eagerness and that obsession with lake fishing. I love all types of fly fishing, but something about the puzzle of still water fishing is so much fun for me. So one thing that, that I really iterate to a lot of our students and actually talk a lot about alongside Phil Rowley when we do still water courses and seminars online is that you have to have your equipment dialed in. If you don't understand your equipment, it's going to use you and you're not going to use it. And lake fishing is one of those instances where having your equipment really, really dialed in is so important. So today I'm going to talk about three different floating lines that I use for still water fly fishing and exactly what their purposes are. You might think three floating lines, that's a bit absurd and maybe it is, but I like to be very, very precise. Now, I want everybody to know that before you watch or listen this, that this is not paid in any way. Uh, this is just me sharing what is in my uh, what is in my gear bag, what I actually bring with me on the water. Now, I only do fish one manufacturer of line, that's Scientific Anglers, but this doesn't mean it's the only manufacturer of line that you can fish. This is just exactly what I use. I'm very grateful to be able to work with them as part of their pro staff team. Uh, so that's just what I'm gonna be talking about today because it's what I love, it's what I use, and it's what I'm familiar with. So first things first, okay? So there's three fly lines, three floating lines that I'll use primarily on still waters. Okay, so the first one's called uh, a still water indicator. Now this is part of the Amplitude Smooth series. And so you, you can get this taper. Uh, this is based off of the Anadro taper, but the reason that I like this line, okay, exactly what it is, is a floating line with a 60 foot head. Now you might think that a 60 foot head, that's, that's you know, quite a bit, that's, that's a long ways, but it's nice, it's got a nice short front taper and I like that the grain weight is dispersed through that front 60 feet of the line. So the reason why this is really nice is because it allows things like roll casting from a long distance, makes it very, very easy. So, you know, the Stillwater Indicator, I'll use this quite a bit for chronomid fishing. I'll use it for fishing leeches. I'll use it for fishing scuds. Basically anything I can throw underneath, uh, underneath a bobber. And I'll actually use it for a naked line chronomid fishing quite a bit too. It's a really, really nice line for that. It's got a, a decently long uh, rear taper that's going to kind of lead it into, uh, in, from the running line into the belly. Now, a lot of times, you know, I'm not really carrying that, that 60 feet of, of head in the air, but most of, I'm, I'm not even casting anywhere clear, uh, anywhere close to 60 feet. But I really, really like this. If I were to only pick one line for, for indicator fishing specifically, this would definitely be it. It's got kind of a dual tone uh, fluorescent section at the front. Uh, so if I'm naked line fishing, you know, a lot of times you're going to feel the bite first, but I've actually used this in moving water too quite a bit sometimes. So I've, I've used it for, you know, nymphing. It's nice to have that cider on the front, but uh, I'll definitely use this line a ton for indicator fishing. I don't use it a lot for really a whole lot else. Uh, so that's a still water indicator or the Anadro taper. Uh, really the only difference between the two is that dual color, that dual tone cider at the front uh, versus the just the one on the uh, 
on the original Anadra line. But anyways, it's a nice line. I use it a ton. I put it in the hands of a, a lot of my clients just because it's an easy line to fish. It's got that nice long head on it. You're never really gonna run out of, of, uh, of line when you're fishing the head. You know, I, I really don't see a lot of instances where you're fishing indicators further than 60 feet from the boat. A lot of times if that's, if that's required, I'll just pick up the boat and move closer to the fish. Okay, so line number two, I fish this line a ton and this is called the Titan Long. Now, the, you might be wondering what's the difference between a Titan and a Titan Long is uh, just actually a longer rear taper on the, on the Titan Long. So, I mean, that's not gonna make the hugest difference in the world, but I like this line. It's got a little bit shorter head, but if somebody gets in my boat and it's like their first time ever fishing, uh, definitely this is the first line that I'll put on for them. It's a beast when it comes to roll casting. It's a really, really easy line to fish, easy line to cast. Um, it's got, again, just like the Anadro or just like the Stillwater Indicator, it's got a pretty short front taper on it. So, you know, one thing that I'm gonna say about both of these lines is that they're not presentation lines really in any way, shape or form. So the same lines that are gonna work really, really well for fishing indicators, you know, leeches, chronomids, in either the larva or the pupil stage. Uh, the same lines that are gonna be great for turning over the, you know, the long 20, 25 foot leaders, not really the same lines you're usually gonna be fishing for dry flies. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But anyways, I really, really like the Titan Long. It's a great line. Uh, it's it's an easy, easy line to load. Now, one thing I'm gonna say with, with the grain weight that goes into some of these lines, especially you know to match a lot of modern day like ultra fast rods, uh, definitely don't be uploading these. Uh, they've got enough grain weight in them already, so don't think that you have to go from, like to put a seven weight in either of these tapers on a six weight rod, just match them straight up. Uh, trust me, they're, they're plenty heavy enough. Okay, so they're nice, and if you're using these in moving water, we'll do another episode on this uh, sometime down the road, but uh, they're nice because you, know, you can mend them like crazy, especially from a long distance, and they turn over even the nastiest of, uh, of stuff you can actually see right now. I've got a I've got a ten foot sink tip on here. I was actually using this for for salmon fishing in the fall. So, anyways, last one that I'll use. I don't know where I've got it. It's on a reel somewhere. Uh, is the MPX taper uh, in the Amplitude series? So I use that. Uh, I, I like this. This is a little bit more of a general purpose floating line. Okay, so like I said, I won't use those first two as much for dry fly fishing. Not really designed for it. They don't, they don't land all that soft. Uh, the MPX taper is really nice. It's got a little bit more of a front taper on it. The presentation side of it is really, really nice. Uh, again, you're always going to be, anytime you're excelling the line in one area, you're gonna sacrifice it in another area. So I won't really use this as much for indicator fishing. It's a half size heavy, right? So it, it is a half line heavy. It will work for indicator fishing, but it's not, in my opinion, as ideal as uh, the first two that we had talked about. Okay, so uh, the MPX taper, I'll use this quite a bit where I love to fish this line is naked line fishing, either chronomids or mayflies. So long leader, no strike indicator, especially into shallow water. This is really, really nice. So if I'm fishing, say, a uh, Calabatus nymph in, seven to 10 feet of water, even five feet of water, even three feet of water sometimes, uh, or scuds on a naked floating line. This is nice, it lands you know, much softer than the first two are going to. Uh, again, all of these lines have their purpose. Uh, there's just certain instances in which I'll use one over the other, but I really, really do enjoy fishing that MPX taper when I'm fishing without the strike indicator. If I'm fishing with the indicator, like I said, it'll still work, absolutely. If you were only gonna buy one, this might be a good place to look, either this or the Titan, but it's, uh, it's again, there's lines that, that I have in my repertoire that are more designed specifically for that, you know, for the strike indicator fishing. So I won't use this as much with the bobbers, but I do love fishing this with, you know, naked line chronomid, naked line mayfly, uh, fishing dry flies as well, or subsurface, you know, emergers fishing right in that surface film be it with, uh, with mayflies or chronomids or fishing you know, adult caddis. So anyways, I know that this was short, but I wanted to split this up into two episodes because uh, the next one that we've got, it's fun to live dangerously sometimes. Uh, the next one that we've got is sinking lines for still waters, which gets a little bit more complex 
uh, just a little bit more technical, but there's a reason why I carry so many different fly lines with me because there's an application for each and every one of them. There are so many different flies, so many different techniques. You know, I used to think floating lines were just for fishing floating flies. Absolutely not the case. Uh, so anyways, I really hope that this episode was useful for you and I look forward to sharing a ton about sinking lines for still waters in episode two of this series. Thank you.